How's it going, YouTube? Uh, welcome back to my reloading bench. I, um, I'm reloading some 357 Magnum here for the first time, and um, I thought about it and I realized that it's been about two, it's coming up on two years that I got into reloading, so I thought while I'm working on uh, resizing and depriming these 357 Magnums, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my first. Uh, my first two years as a reloader. Uh, I have to say overall it's been a very very positive experience. Uh, I was a little skeptical and a little intimidated when I first uh, decided to get into it but ever since then you know as I've picked up more and more experience it's been um, just a wonderful hobby and it really uh, came in handy during the ammunition shortage that uh, followed the Sandy Hook tragedy and is still somewhat uh, present now. You know, a lot of, a lot of the uh, popular calibers have come back, but 22 long rifle is still uh, in a shortage. And it's also the, uh, the prices have gone up quite a bit, so of course, I had no idea that that was going to happen when I got into this um, just about 24 months ago. But it was a very, um, very nice benefit that I wasn't counting on. Um, originally, I just got into reloading because I wanted to take my involvement in the uh, shooting sports and the hobby to the next level. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy that I did. Now, um, some of the benefits of getting into reloading, if it's something that you've been thinking about, I'll just go ahead and talk about some of the, uh, the benefits real quick. Uh, of course, oh, there goes a primer. Uh, yes, you do save money, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. Don't really save that much money, you just get to shoot more for the same amount of money. So it kind of depends on how you look at it. But uh, definitely there is a financial um, incentive to get into reloading. You know, for self-defense ammo, I would definitely stick with factory ammo. There's legal implications that are kind of beyond the scope of this video, but most people, most of the experts, say that for your carry or home defense ammo, make sure it's factory ammo. But for um, target practice, for competition, for hunting, just for, you know, plinking, training, whatnot, it's great to have an, a secondary source of ammunition when um, the supply dri uh, dries up. Uh, the hobby aspect, that's another uh, part that I really like. It's kind of relaxing on the weekends to take a couple of hours and just kind of forget about the stress from, from the work week and crank out 100, 150 rounds of, of pretty good quality practice ammo or or match ammo. Um, yeah, so the hobby aspect is, is kind of nice. If you're the kind of person that has a short attention span and you don't uh, spend a lot of time paying attention to detail, this is probably not the hobby for you. You really have to kind of keep an eye on what you're doing. In fact, while I'm making this video, I'm doing something uh, simple so that I'm not too distracted. I'm just taking the primers out and resizing these things. Um, when I was, if I was to make a video, I probably wouldn't do it while I'm uh, charging these cases. Well, anyways, so yeah, d definitely you gotta have a, a attention to detail and be focused. Can't be, um, you know, like playing on your phone or having a conversation with someone while you're doing this. At least I wouldn't recommend it. So if, yeah, if you're the kind of person that is uh, not into that, then I would probably just say stick to factory ammo because things can go pretty bad if you're not uh, careful. If you want to shoot some of the higher performance calibers that are expensive and or hard to find, it's a really good reason to get into uh, reloading. Uh, a couple of quick examples would be something like a 357 SIG. These are expensive and not every gun shop has them. And the 10mm auto, that's another one. Probably, I probably would not buy these 
I would not buy guns for these calibers if I wasn't going to be able to reload them. It's just, uh, it's too expensive. So that's another example. Um, if you want to get into some of the surplus military rifles, that's been a huge uh, benefit for me, um, having reloading equipment. Um, especially with the M1 Garand, the um, M1A, those older gas-operated guns. Uh, this is 30 out 6 you know, those uh, those guns, the operating rod, the gas system is kind of sensitive to the pressures and you can only use certain ammunition in, for example, an M1 Garand. You wouldn't want to go and just shoot off-the-shelf factory ammo in it without doing something to the, uh, the gas plug because <clears throat> you'll damage the uh, rifle over time. So being able to reload for the M1 Garand, that's been really beneficial because I just go by the reloading manual, I get the powders that are uh, safe to use in that gun, and I'm good to go and I can save money and make some pretty decent quality uh, hand loads for it. I've also reloaded for uh, my Mosin Nagants 762 by 54 r uh, 8mm Mauser. I reload the 308 for my Remington 700. You could also reload 308 for an M1A, etc. So that's really nice. Hard to find cartridges. Oh, oh, if you shoot something that's kind of obscure, like a, for example, 7.7 millimeter Arasaka or a 6.5 Carcano, you can't just walk into any gun shop and find those. So it's nice to be able to reload for them. My last piece of advice to anybody who's considering getting into reloading is I would say I would recommend that you start with a single stage press while you learn the ins and outs of the reloading process. You can buy a progressive or a turret press, but if it was me, I would just stick with something simple like this. And then if you decide that you like it and you want to up your production of ammo per hour, once you get the hang of it, then go on and, and get something um, more expensive and more complicated. And then my last piece of advice would be make sure that you get at least one good reloading manual. I would recommend this one if you were to, if you could only get one, go ahead and get this Lyman reloading manual because it actually does kind of teach you how to reload for the first few chapters before it goes into the individual data. Um, don't tr ask people on the internet for load data. You never know. Um, if that's safe or not. Stick with something like this. Be safe. Learn the ins and outs and then start um, experimenting and making um, the maximum or high pressure loads. That's what I would do at least. Well I hope you enjoyed this little synopsis of my first two years uh, as a reloader. Um, like I said it's been uh, a very very good process. It's taught me a lot about shooting. It's actually made me a better shooter, believe it or not. Um, and I would highly recommend getting into it if it's something that you could see yourself doing safely. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, write them in down below. And thank you so much for watching. You guys take care and sa uh, stay safe. Thanks. I'm sorry, one more piece of advice. Um, just like you would with uh, factory ammo, uh, you know, maybe buying some every few weeks, every other paycheck, something like that, I would recommend that you do the same with your reloading components. Buy some primers every once in a while, buy some bullets, pick up your brass, uh, buy some powder. That was the biggest thing, um, the powder. The powder has still not really come back into into the same supply levels as it was before the shortage started. But my point is reloading components get affected uh, during uh, gun grabbing scares or whatnot. So just like you would with, uh, with buying a little ammo every now and then, I would say do the same with your reloading components. All right, thanks.